Welcome to Zagama in the Basque region of Northern Spain for the first stage of the Golden Trail World Series. The series brings together the world's fastest trail runners to test their skill, agility and speed across some of the world's most exciting trails. The Golden Trail consists of seven races, each testing athletes across different terrains, distances, elevation and conditions to crown the best overall trail runner. It starts with Zagama Escuri, known for its exposed peak and crazy crowds, then moves to the Marathon de Mont Blanc with its long, fast start and iconic finish. The Dolomis Run, short and sharp, where technical runners can leave the trail to run straight down the mountain. Sierra Zanau, known for its speed, where road runners and trail runners can go head to head. Pike's Peak Ascent, starting at 2,000 meters and climbing to over 4,000, where it's a battle just to keep running. Mammoth 26K, with a super sharp climb and long fast descent and the grand final at Il Golfo de Isola Trail Race in Italy, which will bring together all disciplines to crown our series champions. Stage one is in Zagama, a small town nestled in the Pyrenees in the Basque country of Spain. The Basque country is home to two million people with its own language which predates Roman and is known for its fabulous food cider and unique culture. Only 1500 people live in Zagama, but come race day, the town balloons to nearly 10 times that size, with cheering fans keen to watch the race up close. In Zagama is first, I think the ambience, like the atmosphere is crazy, it's the only place where you can feel this. And uh, even if you do a bad race, you will, you will have a good moment. The concentration of the fans here across the entire course is just something that you don't get anywhere else. The first Zagama was in 2002 and the race quickly grew in status, attracting its first international winner in 2004 and becoming one of the most prestigious races in trail running. With an average of 180 days rain a year, Zagama is as famous for its weather as it is its steep climbs. The rain turning its fast downhills into slippery mud baths, treacherous and favouring the more technical runners. It's a Golden Trail Series event, it's Zagama. Uh, the best trail runners which are fit, healthy and able to come and want to come will be here. I think like the majority of the best athletes from last year are here and that's exactly what I expected to happen. I don't really mind mud. I think it will be quite fun, to be honest. It's obviously slower, but you just have to make the most of it. In the men's, last year's series champion and 2018 Zagama winner, Remy Bonnet returns. This season, he's already ski mountaineering world champion, but is he ready for a trail marathon? Yes, yeah, so I am coming back from the skimo season and even if it's really close to the winter, I am really here to, to race it and I don't want to, to miss it, yeah. John Alban must start equal favourite. He won two Golden Trail races last year, including Mont Blanc Marathon, and is a great technical descender, especially in the wet. The weather condition, normally that would really suit me. I haven't done too much trail running in the past weeks, but I'm hoping that once I start running, I just fall back into the groove and I'm just hoping that I can come out on top. Someone else to watch is Manuel Marias, who specializes in technical trail and finished fast to take third place at last year's race. Elusine Elazoui was second in last year's series, but has struggled at longer races. Can he hold on in Zagama? In the women's, Blondine Le Hirondel starts as the favourite. She's the long trail world champion, although she's yet to win a golden trail event. Caitlin Fielder was second at Mont Blanc last year 
and is known for her downhill speed, so she'll have a strong finish. I definitely think I'm in better shape than last year. You always want to say this, but I definitely feel stronger. Spain's Nuria Gil came second in the European Trail Championships, but may find the weather challenging. I really don't like it when the terrain is wet and slippery. Now that China have dropped their COVID restrictions, their athletes can also return to the Golden Trail. I'm Daniela Oemos, I'm from Germany. Would be happy if I get top 10. My name is Silvia Nordskar and I race for Huka and Dali. Of course, a little trench. No ridge this no morning. Ridge so. Yeah, I am excited, but a little stress also. So, see you on the start line. Let's go. Let's go. Just as many runners feared, the overnight heavy rain intensified at the start, and the athletes were desperate to get going. It was pouring down <laughs> very hard. We were standing there, we were getting wet. So the start was pretty intense. A lot of hustle and bustle that goes on. It got quite elbowy and aggressive, which is something that I'm not used to with previous sports, but it was a bit of a surprise. Zagama has the most climbing of any of the races this season with a hefty 2,700 metres of ascent. The race immediately heads skywards before some muddy trails through the forest lead you to the 700 metre climb to Arats. A faster climb and you meet the huge crowds of Santa Spiritu all the way up to the peak of Ascori. Due to strong winds, the course was rerouted along an equally technical selection below the ridge, followed by a steep descent before heading back up across Andres, leaving a long, fast descent all the way to the finish line. Pretty quickly realised that it's pretty muddy and my shoes weren't performing that well on the mud. Went down a few times and smashed up the side of my, my bum and that wasn't very nice but then everyone seemed to be taking a few falls here and there. Quickly turned into a little bit of a sufferfest race as opposed to a nice sunny day. We're out for a, a nice trail run. It, True to form, Rennie Bonnet and Blondine Le Horondel both took to the front as soon as the steep climbing began. Well, I was not full gas actually, like I was in a good pace, so it was not too hard and not too slow. And nobody followed, but it was uh, like for me, it was not the highest pace that I can take. <laughs> I passed Uyana the local girl in the woods. And then I ran a little bit with her, which was really cool because everybody were sharing for her. <laughs> On the climb to Aritz, uh, I started reeling in Nuria and Oihana a little bit. And that's also when Miao Yao passed me, uh, heading up to Aritz. UK before the top of Aritz is when Daniela also passed me. Positions? The truth is I have no idea. I was checking my timings. In Aritz, I think 30 seconds above last year's time, so everything was under control. Yeah, I saw that in uphill I was feeling good, so I knew that uh, I could maybe made a good gap in the two climb after. But I saw also in the downhill that I was losing like a lot of times. Yeah, it was a bit a mixed feeling between the yeah I feel strong, but uh, in the other hand I cannot like win the race due to the downhill.
I heard that Meow Yao had overtaken Blundine and was just really tracking up that climb, which was, um, it's a bit daunting when you hear that kind of news. On the climb to Arat, China's Miao Yao used her 2.30 marathon pace to blast past Blondine and continue to push the pace up the following hill. Obviously, the people here are not afraid from rain because it was crazy. The tough conditions were taking their toll on the athletes and forced a lot of them to retire early, including podium favourite Nuria Jill. But the race was still in its infancy. The athletes were just about to hit Sancta Spiritu, where all hell broke loose. The crowds of Sancta Spiritu clearly lifted Robert Pekemboy's spirits, who surprised Remy with an overtake on the up, who fought back to retake the lead at the peak of a scorey. So Robert like catch me and I see that he was going faster than me, so I let him pass and I tried to follow. And I saw also that in the pill I was I was stronger than him, so I knew that uh, even if he took a bit, it was not a, not a problem. Like every climb I was catching him and taking some time. So it was like a bit of a, we changed the position quite a few times. Before Santa Spiritual, I overtook Caitlin. There were so many people screaming, it was really loud. Due to strong winds at Ixuri, the course was diverted below the ridge, but the terrain was no less technical. This was exactly what John Alban had been waiting for, with a double overtake to take the lead. I actually managed to take the lead on the long flat section. We passed the Demi on the downhill, passed Robert shortly after on the flat section. I got quite cold there, which wasn't a, a good thing, and then dragged... Um, We'll see, is it up that final last climb and thought, OK, I'm in here, this, this could go well, I could do this. By now, Blondine was fading, who was caught by Germany's Daniela Omusa, who was showing her class in the wet and continued to push past Miao, who had misjudged her early pace. When I overtook Blondine in the downhill after Sancto Spiritu. I didn't recognize her. I couldn't see her face. Daniela Amusa was also giving a masterclass in rocky running and building herself a two minute cushion. Meanwhile, Caitlin Fielder was emerging as Daniela's biggest challenge, overtaking Blondine on the following downhill. After I score, the race was diverted a little bit from the original ridge that they usually run in Zagama, but it was still incredibly technical. I would say like it was exactly the same, but we just weren't on the ridge. I was pretty sure that I saw Blondine. I wasn't 100% sure because she had changed her rain jacket to a purple one, but it was during quite a technical section and I kind of felt quite confident, so I just kept going my own speed. When I overtook Miao Yao around 27k, she looked a little bit, I guess, more tired, heading up a slight incline, and obviously she had passed me earlier, and she passed me really fast. I could tell maybe um, there was a bit of a bit tired there, or it's, it's a really hard race to try and judge. I passed uh, Blondine uh, at the flat section before the last uphill. I wasn't sure it was her. I couldn't see her backpack or her bib. She was all covered up in her raincoats and uh, yeah, I think she was freezing.
Manu Marias, who had been sat back in seventh, was demonstrating how he'd podiumed last year by attacking every descent. I caught Remy Bonnet before arriving to Urbia, just before, and he just moved aside. More or less, I knew where everyone was, but he was with them before slowing down. And it turns out, they were pretty close. Remy, well, he came out very strong. He played his cards and it kind of worked, because he did a great time too. Therese Leboeuf caught Miao Yao on the final climb to Andrates, a man who was quickly picking up places, passing Bart Pajoyeski, Thibaut Baronian and Remy in quick succession before he took the lead. Manu, I am the boss of the uphill and he is the boss of the downhill, so he was going like me in the uphill but in the downhill. <laughs> John Album finding that his legs weren't up for this battle. And then Manuel just flies by and I think, okay, there's no way I'm holding with him. My legs were completely destroyed by that point. They had nothing left. El Hussein decided to change trains and was now sat on the shoulder of Manu. So from Erbia to the top, I cut about 20 seconds, which is already outrageous for me, especially on a hill like that. Then I started to go down, and 200 meters down, there were some switchbacks, and you were already on the path. I caught them there, and I didn't think twice. I immediately overtook them, and was followed afterwards by El Hussein. I was very curious how my position were. There were three small boys, and they were saying something like, Cuarto chica, and then I <laughs> understood that. <laughs> It was something with four, so I thought, okay, either it's four, that would be crazy, maybe it's 14. As the noise of the crowd started cheering him home, Manu decided he wasn't going to lose this battle and increased his pace to eke out a 20 second lead and race all the way through to his first win at Zagama. Elusine looked comfortable in second and clearly was delighted to get second at Zagama. Not used to the wet, this was a great position for him. And John Album held on for third, smiling all the way to the finish line. Somebody told me maybe at kilometer 15 that I was sixth. I had gone through the table as the speaker. Uh, and he told me that I was first and I was, uh, what? <laughs> Caitlin kept on increasing the pace, but Daniela was just too strong, finishing first at Zagama, a surprise to herself, because until the finish line, she would believed she was lying in fourth place. An epic race. There were so many people on the course, despite the rain, despite the cold, despite the storm. That was really fantastic. I haven't experienced anything like it. Caitlin cruised in for her first podium of the season, and Therese Leboeuf finished in third for her first ever Golden Trail podium. While Remy Bonnet and Robert Kimoy built a lead of 1 minute and 55 seconds on the ascent to Aretz over Manu Marias, they both lost ground to him on the flat and the downhill sections. Jonathan Album was the strongest over the flat section covering 2.7 kilometers in 11 minutes and 30 seconds. That's four minutes 15 per kilometer. Impressive given how wet it was and closely followed by El Hussein and Manu. Despite Manu being the slowest of the top five on the uphill, or maybe because of that, he was the fastest on the downhill, completing 9.4 kilometers in 30 minutes and six seconds. An average of 3 minutes 12 per kilometre. Incredible. Manu rose from 7th place to 4th place on the flat terrain and secured the victory on the downhill section. Caitlin Fielder was the strongest on the flat section, completing it in 14 minutes and 15 seconds and also on the downhill section with a time of 33 minutes and 44 seconds. That's 3.37 per kilometre. But unlike Remy and John, Daniela had built such an impressive lead on the uphill that she just couldn't be caught. 
Caitlin managed to claw back more than one minute and 30 seconds across the flat and the downhill, but Daniela's all-round performance was simply too good. Miao Yao had dominated the first third of the race, being one of the strongest climbers. However, her downfall was evident in the final descent. She took 57 minutes to complete the last kilometers, whereas the fastest finisher, Caitlin, finished in 33 minutes and 44 seconds, resulting in a loss of more than 20 minutes. Miao Yao went from being in first place at Arats to fifth place after the flat section and eventually finished in 24th. Far below what she'd hoped for, but it's so hard to pace such varied terrain and the runners know they need to take some risks to get on that podium. A total of 538 participants registered for the race, and of the 484 that started, 77 of them were forced to pull out, a DNF rate of 14%. Until this year, there were 22 athletes who had completed every edition of the Gamma. Jose Antonio Mangus retired at Sancta Spiritu, reducing that list down to five people who get free entry, as long as they continue to finish. The average age of the men and women on the podium was 33 years old, all of them being over the age of 30. The finish of Zagama is just the same as Santa Spiritu, I guess everyone is yelling your name. It's an incredible experience and of course coming second makes it even more special. Thinking back to it, it's a crazy experience. There's, there's nothing like that any, in any other race that I know of. It's like a once in a lifetime type thing to go through with that many people cheering and screaming. Uh, if anything, it's a bit too loud. If you had asked me before when we were at the start line, I would have said, well, it seems that the conditions are what I want. Combine that with people destroying the paths. It was all mud. So, perfect. In Zagama, the big surprise was Daniela Omas stepping up from the National Series to show her class on the international stage. The big question is, who will be the surprise of Mont Blanc? We're back on the 25th of June with the Mont Blanc Marathon in Chamonix, the global home of trail running. The race is a very fast start and two long climbs, which have been the undoing of many good runners. So tune in to see who can take home the trophy and score some more vital points in the Golden Trail World Series. It's going to be the race of the season. <laughs>